It's not every day that you get two mega superstars on the bench. I feel intimidated already, but I tell you, being in their presence, we'll talk about Faith Keep You Gone, double Olympic gold medalist, and Eliud Kipchoge, also double Olympic gold medalist, and the only human to ever run the marathon in under two hours. Goodness gracious me, I'm humbled. Good to see you both. Welcome, Eliud. Thank you. Welcome, Faith. Thank you. How does it feel to be a double Olympic gold medalist? Wow, it's it feels amazing. Um, I can say it's something special to be an Olympian and uh, also to be double Olympic champion. Mm. Yeah. Congratulations. And you broke the Olympic record too. Yeah. Thank In you. Tokyo. Thank you. And then Diamond League, you went and wiped out the field. <laughs> wow, it was really great. <laughs> It's really um, emotional there, you know, yeah. winning an uh, Olympic and after that you go to Jambo League, winning a trophy in front of that amazing field yeah. with many people after a long time of uh, Corona and yeah. all that, yeah. And for you, Eliud, I mean, goodness, on the last day of the Olympics, there you go running and you get that second gold medal. How did that feel? Uh, I felt really good. Uh, the goodness is that uh, is the inspiration. The goodness is the history because I am the third person to win pack to pack uh, gold medal in marathon. So I was really happy to go into history books and and really inspire the next generation to mm. to focus more and and, and actually. Uh, 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 be more professional in sport. Yeah. In the first few days of the Olympics, Eliud, and you saw this, uh, Kenya wasn't winning. You know, we weren't, you know, getting any medals. Was that a little disturbing for you? You know, because, uh, you know, the, the reaction was, what's wrong with our team? What's wrong with our team? In the end, we ended up with, I think, 4-4-2 or something. We were top in Africa. But in the beginning, was it difficult? Yes, it, it was difficult because when you just jumped in in your sitting room and watch actually other countries, uh, celebrating uh, the medals and your own country is not celebrating. Mm. So it was really disturbing, but all in all, it's sport, you know, they say if you want to enjoy sport, then you need to accept that defeat. Yeah. Yes. Faith, did you, and you, I'm sure you saw the headlines. I mean, our, our newspapers weren't helping much when they're saying, what's wrong with our team? What's wrong? Uh, actually, uh, you know, when all the teams from other countries are in their own track, uh, you know, Every country expects more, you know, expects something special, expect gold medals. But for us, we went there and uh, for the first times we were, we were on the track and um, at least we were doing something, but we were not getting a gold medal. But at the end, we came home with the four medals and we were happy about it. And uh, yeah, I did. We, we did great. You, d you, yes. did. <laughs> you did. You guys yeah. flying our flag high. and. Uh, when you hear that national anthem, and I keep asking this, and you know, obviously, I, I, how does it feel when our national anthem is playing in a stadium like that, whether it's Tokyo or Diamond League or Zurich or Vienna? Yeah, I can say it's really special uh, uh, for the national anthem to be sing when you are on top there, with, when you are on the podium. You just feel emotional because uh, you know you are carrying the flag of Kenya at the back of you. You have to to show that you are the greatest, yeah. yes. Eliud, October 12th, 2019, you're in Vienna. The track is set and you're about, well, we were about to witness history. Take us back to that moment, nearly two years ago. Yeah, absolutely, yes. it's about two years ago. Uh, maybe I think one year, about 11 months and a half. Hmm. I think it was the great man, the great day, for the whole world actually to, to see history again because it, it was really long. It was, it was about 65 years since a, a man or a woman actually met history. So it was a good day that uh, I tried to run under two hours and I could not even to try, but I tried to, I dare to think and then dare to try. Mm. There are two different things. You know, if you don't dare to think, then you cannot dare to try. So I dare to think and then I dare to try and I was successful. Did you know that, Elio? Did you know that day you would break that two hour mark? Oh, I was really optimistic and, and that uh, I will not miss it. Reason number one is that uh, I had a huge experience from uh, two years down the line from 2017 in Monza that I transfer 
the whole experience with the whole team to 2019 and put in practice. So I was working on those 25 seconds, which I can say actually we worked together as a huge team and actually we we, we, we got the result. Yeah. Uh, the, for those who don't remember, the first time you tried to break the two-hour mark, you missed it, like you said, by 25 seconds. Yes. That was the breaking two. That was in 2017. Yes. And that didn't discourage you? The, you, you, uh, you know, in 2017, we were, we, we were trying to break the two-hour barrier. Uh, we were like a pox actually going into, into the ring, not knowing whether it was actually knocked out whether you will, uh, will actually win by, by actually decision or actually something might happen. So all of us as a team we went into the ring, but we were successful. We just missed a chance by 25 seconds. Mm. And, and, and we, that time actually we realized that uh, uh, anything is possible. And uh, uh, you know, many people were saying if you run two hours or under two hours, uh, you might actually, anything might happen in your body. But I proved them wrong by running two hours and 25 seconds. Go back to the drawing board again with the whole team, work on the right systems, two years down the line, then I got, uh, uh, I, I broke the two hour barrier. Yeah, the very famous Ineos 159.40. By the way, the world record is held by you. 201.39? Yes, 209. <laughs> Could you, you have everything. <laughs> In between Rio and Tokyo, you had a baby girl. Yes. And I were did. able to come back into track. Yes. How? Um, I can say um, it was not easy. <laughs> yeah, it was not easy uh, to decide to, for, to go for maternity leave and, and come back strong as I am right now. It, it was not easy. But it's something just to sacrifice yourself, that you have to, to have a baby and come back and uh, you know, having a baby gives you joy. And um, at least when you have joy, you can work more harder. And uh, you can know um, I'm working for, for the baby, I'm working hard, more harder for the baby to get a, a more of a good future. Yeah. So, you know, it was not easy, but I took the break. <laughs> What's your daughter's name? How old is she? She's three years now. What's her name? Yeah, she's uh, Aline. She she, is, she work, is she watching you? No, she's asleep now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. she woke up. Yeah, <laughs> she's asleep. Up. <laughs> yeah. She's sleeping because she goes to school tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. but I think her, uh, her father is watching me. Yeah. Eliud, I mean, a lot of people want to know how has life changed for you, especially having grown up in Kapsisiwa? You know, uh, how has life changed for you? What do you mean by change? <laughs> Just tell me what you mean by change, and I will explain. To you. Okay, look, we always read how you live in a you know you, you live in a communal uh, place. You're always doing chores. You, you you know you do the work that you know, other people wouldn't do at your status at your level. How is that possible? Uh, I think actually I can say life has changed as far as uh, performance is concerned. But the same Melut Kipchoge is still the same. Uh, uh, but maybe thinking wise, I've changed, you know, because I am now uh, uh, the confronter in life, because I'm confronting life. Anything comes on, I just confront. I don't affect any, any problem, I just confront on it. That's the real change. It, you, I, it, your question is hard, but uh, I really want to know yeah. what you really mean by change so that I explain fully. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> because I'm still the same. <laughs> <laughs> You're still the same Elliot. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So after 159.40, after you broke that two hour mark, did you think, you know what? I've achieved everything now. Oh, that's not in my mind at all. You know, l let me tell you one thing, Chef. Even a billionaire cannot finish a whole loaf of bread. <laughs> He or she can eat half. So I have not yet finished a loaf of bread. <laughs> still big. I'm trying to still chew it as you are going on. Wow. <laughs> Wisdom. Are you listening out there? You're going to finish the loaf eventually, though? The loaf of bread? The, the future will tell. <laughs> <laughs> but your lifestyle, Elliot, you still live that simple lifestyle. Uh, yes, uh, simple lifestyle, you know. Uh, 
I trust and I believe that uh, simple lifestyle is the way to actually control your conscience to think well and actually handle some trainings and, and, and life in a good way. You know, uh, 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 I'm still doing shopping downstairs. I've never transferred to upstairs. <laughs> you didn't start off running the marathon, right? Yes. You started in the shorter, yes. what we call the shorter races is still, you know, 5,000. Yes, I ran 5,000, 1,500, 3,000, 10,000 for 10 years. And I, for 10 years, I ran 130 minutes in 5,000 meters. And I think I can say I enjoy track and field before actually uh, making a huge transition to marathon. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you know that you were going to transition earlier? Did you know I'm going to go from uh, 3,000 to 5,000 to 10? To, is that the natural progression or? Uh, actually, when I was running in track and field and cross country, then I was playing between 1,500 up to 10,000. But uh, uh, after 10 years, then we, we, we'd sit with my coach and, and say, hey, we have actually finished a huge a, a ticket uh, 10 years in, in track and field. Let us try our luck actually in, in the road and in marathon. And, 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 that, and that's why the idea of marathon actually and the road came in mm. and I chip in immediately and and to the necessary. Yeah. Yes. Faith, what about you? Was it always the 1500? Was that always your specialty? Yeah, well, I, I can say when I was young, I used to run 3000. But uh, being um, a, a good athlete, I switched to, to, to 1500. And that's where I became a, a stronger athlete and moving on to, to, I can say, where I am now. And uh, I'm seeing myself to full stop so valued. <laughs> That's marathon. <laughs> Do you really? Yes. You're thinking about it? Yes, I'm thinking about it. That's a huge transition, Faith. I know. <laughs> but I, I, I have a belief and uh, confidence that I will reach where Elliot have reached because uh, he used to run 1,500 and also 5,000. And now he's in marathon. And I think I can do also. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. You have a great rivalry between yourself and Sifan Hassan, huge rivalry. Are you friends or, you, uh, or is it just about competition? I can say absolutely, we are friends. <laughs> yeah, we are friends, but we are not friends in competition. With, uh, whenever it's competition, we are not friends. So we have to fight for each other. Um, you know, for a win, it's just only one person. So we just go to fight. After the fight, we, we became friends again. <laughs> And you keep beating her every time. Yeah, sometimes she beats me. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Good rivalry. Okay. Eliud, um, London Marathon is this coming weekend. I just noticed. Yes. Right? October the 3rd, right? Uh, you ran it in 2020, right? And 2019. 2019, pardon me. And you, you came in eighth. Yes. Was that disappointing for you? Yeah, it was a huge disappointment. Uh, when actually recording actually the, the input I put for five months or six months of training. But only all those are, those are the challenges, you know, you can win everything, but uh, you can compete and, 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 and get a position. So I think it was a wake up call for me. And as always, uh, 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 it's, you can win because you're always, you, I'm, I'm a human, I can win everything. Yeah. So I just got eighth position go back to the drawing board, uh, go to the table with the technical team, with the management, with the coaching team, and actually we share what happened, uh, the future, uh, what the future will be, and what was available there for me to crap in the table and, and move on. Yeah. Yes. What keeps you going, Eliud? What is it that keeps that fire going? It's the inspiration and the love of sport. What I mean by inspiration is that the inspiration that I'm instilling to the general public in, in our country, Kenya, Africa, and all over the world. That I always say, no human is limited. I always tell people, please run out of your door, run for 40 minutes, run to one hour for your health. And, and above all, local people are doing it. Yeah. Yes. Out there when you're running outside of Kenya, you just said, you know, re representing Kenya and the continent. But when you're running in Europe, when you're running in Asia, how do they treat you there? What? Uh, they treat me in a good way. 
uh, I don't know, but uh, I think they have more respect. Uh, every, I have a lot of respect everywhere in this world. But you know, when you go outside the country, then you, you get actually uh, uh, extraordinary treatment. Faith, do you feel the same way? Do you feel like outside of Kenya, you guys are treated like super, super mega stars? Yeah, I can say uh, when we are out there, we have been treated in a nice way and treated as uh, human beings. Uh, I can say human beings are the same uh, in this world. Yeah. <laughs> and they treat everybody the same. So when we go out there, uh, they t treat us in a good way and they respect what we do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but you do, enjoy sports. Do you guys find people coming up in selfies, you know, at the airports or in the streets? Do they do, do you get that? Yes, we get that. Uh, sometimes when, like now, when they when we have mask, it's not easy to recognize somebody. Mm. But uh, when we don't have mask, you find people say, "Hey, hello, face, hello, yeah, yeah." Elliot, it must be the same with you, mask or no mask. It's the same, you know, uh, it's, uh, I can say it's a huge experience, you know. Yeah. Faith can hide, but I know that I have a big head <laughs> and everybody can see from the fact that that's Elliot working. So, that's Elliot, that's Elliot. <laughs> yes, even with a mask. So, but that's a huge appreciation. Yeah. I always uh, feel happy when, I, every, when people actually confront me. I sign the autographs, take photos and move on. Yeah. Yes. My son really wanted to come and do the same, huh? take photographs and... Uh, Sign up, but I'll give you something to sign later on that, that, if, if you don't mind. That would yeah, be, nice. be good. I will still sign. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> By the way, how do you deal with injury, uh, Ellie? Because sometimes, you know, obviously, injuries are, no are normal, right? How do you deal with injuries? Injuries actually are, are a part of sport. They are number one challenges in running. But uh, if you want to deal with uh, injury, actually, is to, to start, uh, you should have a coach which actually guides you. It's just when you are starting actually your season, then you should start in a good way, going to gymnasium, doing strength training, and, and that's, uh, that's the way to, to actually make your muscles uh, 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 f more fitter and more, and, uh, and to, to adapt to the next uh, uh, sort of training. Mm -hmm. So if you come and rush immediately, then that's where to get uh, injury. So it's good actually to, to, be, a, to be a professional, Professionals mostly escape injuries, and if they get injuries, they will actually uh, get cured and, and move on. Yeah. Amateurs actually get injuries and stuck. Reason is that uh, uh, professionals actually follow the, 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 the schedule uh, to the letter. Uh, uh, amateurs, on the other hand, actually are, are, are outside there, actually uh, going up and down with the agency of life. That's the two different things. If you are a professional, you can get an injury, but you can go through. Yeah, and you have to take your time. Absolutely. Right? Injury, you know, if you get an injury, it's like getting a headache. Mm. And if you have a headache, you take a Panadol, and you, it's, uh, it's, it can take more than three, four hours to, to cure, you know, but when the headache is coming, it's like an electric shock. Just once, but you need to take Panadol, take water, go for a rest, just sleep three hours, then you are okay. Mm. It's like injury. It's not a white night event. We need to go to, to see the fish, uh, follow the, 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 the prescription, and, and that's the way to cure the injury. Absolutely. Yes. Good points, good points. You agree, Faith? Yes, absolutely. Because one, one small injury could lead to, uh, could destroy your career, right? That's absolutely. Could live yeah. the career, yeah. right? Do you take, how do you take care of yourselves, you know, yourself, let's say, if, when you're injured? Um, I just give myself a break when I'm injured. Uh, I just uh, sit down with my doctor uh, for the advice and uh, yeah, it's just a, m a matter of giving yourself uh, at least a break to recover. Just don't train um, many times or don't train uh, sometimes because you are injured, you can get, it can get more worse. Uh, it's, I can say just that's the matter of risk, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, take your time. Good. Um, I know you guys don't like being in the big city. You like being out there in the countryside, which is great. Elude, what is your typical day like? Like today you were telling me you were in the gym. You train every day. What is a typical day for you like? Oh, normally, actually, like the, no, for now, for the last one month, I, I'm doing a 
gym for t t three times a week. I just I'm starting my gym at six thirty, and just here at nine o'clock. That's about two and a half hours. I'll go and have breakfast. I'll just relax, do one to some few errands, and wait for choking in the evening. And how many kilometers do you do in the evening? Uh, only ten. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say only 10? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, what about when it's the, re the, re the season is on? How many kilometers would you do a day or a week? When the season is on, yes. I normally do between 200 and 220 kilometers per week, which can translate to about uh, uh, 900 kilometers per, per month. Good Lord, it's like Mombasa to Malaba. <laughs> For the old man, yes. <laughs> Good Lord, Faith. How about you? What's your day like? Typical day. Um, I can say for now I'm in uh, off season. I just which is good. I mean, yes, relax. Yeah, and... I'm not relaxing at home. Just having fun with my daughter. Uh, after break classic, uh, I just took off. Uh, just to recover, and then uh, maybe next month I'm starting gym. Um, but when the season is on. I usually do uh, less than Elliot. He does. <laughs> he does a, a, a lot of long run. He, he does a lot of long run, and also uh, speed work. But for me, it's less. It's um, it's like when I go long run, I just go for one hour. Okay. Yes. A, a, a day. Yeah. A day. Yes. Morning, evening. Yes. Morning, evening. Morning, I do one hour twenty, and then in the evening, I just do with them ten kilometers. <laughs> Ten. Yes. You're seeing this like you, it's a walk in the park. It's like it's like walking to my, you know. No, it's long. It's long. <laughs> Ten kilometers is long. Yeah. Just going five kilometers and back, it's really long. Yeah. Elliot, how long can you keep running is a question a lot of people are asking. How much lo longer? And I know you keep saying no human is limited. Great quote, by the way. Great quote. But how much longer can you, can Elliot keep running? Oh, I think I'm still around. But uh, the future actually will dictate when I will learn my racing shoes. But all in all is that uh, I don't see myself stopping. Even if I retire, I will go to big city marathons to, to joke with the general public and run for a course. Hmm. Next year, obviously, you're not going to do uh, London, which is this weekend. You're not going to do New York. I mean, you know, you're taking a break from that. Next year, you ready? To do, how many marathons can you do next year, or will you do? I, I think I'll do two, uh, two marathons next year, yes. I know you love Berlin. It's uh, a favorite of yours. I don't know what will happen next year, but I'll do two, two marathons. Yeah. yeah my, my, my program is now to concentrate on strength training, uh, uh, more fitness than this year. Yes. What do you think about the competition from our neighbors, the Ethiopians? Uh, the competition really is, is purely held. Um, without a Kenyan and an Ethiopian, then actually a race is not a race. Mm. But uh, I can say the competition is purely held. That's why we are competing and shaking hands at the end of the race. Mm. You, you had a rivalry for quite a while with Kenanisa Bekele, right? Yes. What was that like, running against each other each time? Uh, it was fun at the same time. Actually, it was... Uh, 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 you know, when you compete with somebody all the time and you become second, it was, uh, it was really hard. Mm. But I enjoyed 10 years uh, competing with Kenanisa in mm. track and field. Yes. Are you friends now? Are you? Absolutely, yes. Uh, it's, it's sport is just uh, actually making us to meet. When we are actually on the road, we are competing uh, for the first prize, but, but we are friends. Mm. Yes. You, uh, um, Faith, you get a lot of inspiration from uh, your fellow uh, runner, Vivian Cheruiot, we hear. Yes. Yes? Yes. Go on, tell us about um, that. I can say Vivian is my role model. <laughs> when, uh, when I was young, I used to see Vivian running. So I was still a very small kid, and I, was, I used to see Vivian running, and I told myself, I, one day I want to be like Vivian. And uh, she's a nice lady. She always uh, encouraged me to, mo to, to work more harder and follow her footsteps. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, we were recently in Ethiopia, Eliud, and uh, we did a story on uh, Haile Gebrselassie. 
great story. I mean, he's doing a lot of investments in his country and all that stuff. You doing the same? I'm sure you're doing the same. <laughs> No, no, not really. I've not yet retired. I think it's good when I retire, you ask me that question. <laughs> you want to keep running? I want to keep running. But you're still investing at the same time. <laughs> my, my mind purely is, uh, is, is, is on running now. You know, I don't, do, I don't want to mix two things at, uh, at, at one time. And you're in no hurry to retire, Elliot. You're in no hurry. <laughs> <laughs> no hurry, but I think it will be, time will come. Yes, uh, in sport time will come. So I am aware that uh, soon or very soon, or in future actually, I will go, I will retire. But uh, I think I will have somewhere to lean on and work for this sport. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. About you, Faith? Investing in bomb met or? <laughs> <laughs> as as well you say, uh, for now we are just focusing uh, in our careers and uh, yeah, moving on to a big goal ahead of us. Mm. Yes. And you want to do another Olympics, don't you? Of course, yes. I want to do another Olympics, which is 2024. <laughs> yes. And in between the Diamond Leagues, the other... Uh... Yes, um, absolutely, yes. We are, uh, for now, I'm focusing on uh, next year, pro, uh, God willing. We hope uh, good things will happen next year uh, as we are going to start our Diamond Leagues so in, uh, in May. And uh, also a big goal in uh, in uh, August, which is World Championship. Yes, yeah. It should be really good. Yeah. Speaking of World Championships, uh, Elliot, Kenya recently, this year, hosted two major championships, the World Under 20 and the Continental Tour. You've been in this business for the last decade or so. Have you seen the standards improving here in our country? Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, change as far as organization is concerned, and how people actually treat sport. Uh, our government are really now close to the people, close to the sporting, and government is supporting more, more, more actually on, on the sporting side. That's why uh, the, two, uh, the Continental Tour under 20 was, was really successful. And I trust that uh, the, Kenya is bidding for 2025 World Championships. I trust the World Championships will come here in Nairobi and that's a plus for our country. Yeah. What do you think, Faith? Do you think we, uh, we performed well? <laughs> yeah, I, say, I can say, um, seeing back uh, like 2017 20, uh, with the World Youth and also 2021 with the World Junior, it was successful for Kenya. And uh, that shows Kenya can do a bigger event. Like, uh, you see, going forward to 2025, we have World Championship here in Kenya. And uh, we hope it will be successful as 2021 World Juniors. Yeah, yes. it was a great year, yeah. and Kenya did really well. Do you feel appreciated by your, by your government, by this country? Do you feel appreciated, Elliot? Absolutely, yes. Why not? That's where we are now. <laughs> that's why we have peace in this country. Yes. We enjoy peace. That's why we're going to training to it any time we want. So the government is doing well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Such humility from two mega superstars. A lot of people want to know where you grew up. What did you go to school? What was it like back then? Hold that thought after the break. Yes. Too early. I asked you about <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Capsi Siga. Yes. I asked you and he just avoided it. But you know, we'll come back to that. Yeah. Okay. Where did you guys grow up? How was it? Let's find out. There's so many questions people want to know. It's incredible to be in the presence of such greatness right here, folks. Faith Kipiagon, double Olympic gold medalist and a daughter in between. And of course, the only human being to ever run the marathon in less than two hours. Make that 159.40. He also holds the world marathon record at 201.39. Eliud Kipchoge. This is inspiration at his finest. Keep tweeting. We'll get to your tweets in a little short while. At Queen Anger Jeff, at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.